All right. I'm really excited about what you should be seeing on your screen now. Uh, this is actually the front cover, the mission statement um, for our entire district. And this is now the front cover of our PEC hand, family handbook uh, that, that we will be showing you. There's a link to that. You can get that right on our website. Uh, but this mission statement and vision for our school district was truly uh, just unveiled a week ago at the Lewiston Porter uh, Board of Education meeting in June. Um, this is something that we have been working on to unite every building on our campus. Prior to last week, every building had their own mission statement. And uh, for the last year and a half, I have been involved in strategic planning with stakeholders from all over our school district. And together, we decided we wanted one mission statement to unite us. We are beginning um, a new district strategic plan that will really be the lighthouse um, of all the goals that we'll be working on in our district for the next five years. So if you take a look at it, um, it is uh, a really a commitment to every Lewiston Porter family of having one purpose as a district. And that purpose is to ensure that when students leave our school district, when they graduate as seniors, that they will be ready to face the world with confidence in, their self, in themselves and also what they are going to contribute to the world. While students are here, that purpose will be achieved by really challenging each of our students, starting in with the kindergarten journey, to develop their own pathway. Um, and our promise to you is to give each family, each student, uh, we promise to give them the best. Every loose importer employee um, in the district promises to give each child their best. Um, so that is our new mission statement. Uh, again, just unveiled uh, last week to our Board of Education. Uh, we're very excited about it, and, and I wanted to share that with you today because you are really the first uh, class, uh, kindergarten class, to be on that journey with us. So one purpose, your pathway, and our promise to you. I'd like to now uh, just quickly go over the agenda for today and then introduce you to a very special person. So what you can expect today, and I know we did send this to you ahead of time if you had a chance to review it, um, you are gonna be meeting um, the whole team of kindergarten teachers. We have a short video to show you today. Um, we also have a shortened version of a kindergarten ambassador video. Uh, which we sent you QR codes to uh, when we sent you this invite. I'll be going over that, and if you don't have QR, um, don't know how to access those codes, I will be sharing that with you today. Um, we wanna make sure you know where to find our family handbook. Um, you're going to be meeting um, a teacher leader of our kindergarten teachers, Mrs. Allender, who's on today, and is gonna tell you more about our curriculum in kindergarten. And we also are going to show you where to find a video that showcases our whole kindergarten program. Um, you will meet uh, staff, uh, other staff members um, like Mrs. Leggett, who's our nurse, Mrs. Myers, our social worker. And then we are gonna be answering all of your questions that you sent into us uh, when you signed up for today's Zoom. Uh, so I actually put the questions uh, right there and we're gonna go over all of those. And if you have more, like I, like I said earlier, please just hit that chat button and we will be sure to answer it at any time. So that's what you can expect uh, from our agenda today. I'd like to now move to introducing you to a member of our uh, PTSA community. That is Mrs. Julie Donnelly. Um, and Mrs. Donnelly is really going to uh, talk to you about how important um, a priority it is to Lewiston Porter School District to have parent partnerships. 
and she is representing our parent group uh, that is united um, as a PTSA for our entire district. Mrs. Donnelly? Mrs. Donnelly, you're on mute. Okay. Hi, there good we, morning. There we go. I eventually might get used to this. Um, <laughs> Thank you uh, for uh, inviting me this morning, and um, I know you have uh, quite an agenda, so I'll just uh, I'll just be brief. But the PTSA is the Parent Teacher Student Association, and we are um, represent all students in all buildings. And close to my heart is the primary building, and we're very well established in the elementary. That's where we start it. Um, and moving forward to the year ahead, we still don't know all of our involvement or our parameters or how that's going to look. But in general, we have a yearly fundraiser, usually in the form of a fun run. And those funds all go towards um, the students, all the students, student enrichment. Um, we sponsor field trips, author visits, creating ri creative writing workshops, health and wellness. It's quite a large, uh, a large scope, and our goal is to support all students and all families. And uh, we're very, very, very passionate. It's a good organization made up of uh, volunteers. You'll be invited to become members, and it's our members that make us strong of uh, parents and teachers. And uh, you will receive information at the beginning of the year to create our, um, our, our member base. And based on that, um, we also have uh, volunteer opportunities through, throughout the year. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Donnelly? I know you have to pick up your little one who just got out of kindergarten and yes. is actually one of our ambassadors that you're going to meet in a few minutes. Um, but I know you have to pick her up in junior sailing. So um, how can they become a member? Um, usually we have membership forms uh, when we're live in person. So what can they do Indeed. now to uh, become a member of the PTSA and be involved in that group? We do have a link on the main website and we'll likely be updating that shortly and you'll be able to log on and become a member uh, online. Excellent. So Mrs. Donnelly really shares that organization's involvement and uh, they not only fundraise for us, but they are critical uh, stakeholders. Uh, PTSA members and parents were involved in rewriting our district strategic plan. Uh, we had parents at the table throughout the entire process. And again, that plan will guide the direction of our district um, for the next five years. Um, at the PEC, we do have a parent volunteer program. Mrs. Donnelly uh, mentioned that she's not sure what the parameters will be this year. Um, we are still waiting on guidance from our New York State Education Task Force on reopening schools and uh, we may have some limitations to the parent volunteer program uh, to begin with but what i will tell you is we have a strong uh, base of parent volunteers um, prior to our pandemic uh, parents it's not unusual to see parents with parent badges walking in our hallway identifying them as a volunteer they're directly involved in the classroom. We have a parent room just for you to take projects down to that room and support um, our teachers, especially at the uh, uh, universal pre-K level and the kindergarten level where everything is hands-on um, to engage the youngest learners. So um, more to come on that. Um, today, I wanna focus on the kindergarten program and the district uh, will be communicating uh, reopening pr procedures and guidelines when we have those from the state. Um, but I'm sure that is going to uh, impact our volunteer program slightly in terms of who is let into the building. Um, so just, more, uh, more to come on that. I, I just wanted to, yes. to leave you with, uh, no matter how the fall is shaping, I can just tell you that the kindergarten teaching team is amazing and so heartfelt and um, 
uh, so available. And uh, even though we transitioned from school to home learning very quickly, uh, we're very present uh, for my daughter to the end of the year. And um, I just uh, can't thank them enough. So whatever is happening in the fall, I can assure you, I think you're gonna have a wonderful kindergarten year. They're gonna just make something special happen for you. Mrs. Donnelly, thank you so much for that. And I so appreciate your time this morning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Donnelly. Okay, so with that, you are going to now meet that dynamic, wonderful kindergarten team. We have a video for you um, where they are all introducing themselves. There's no, there's no sound. Hold on. Okay. What am I? Okay. Here we go. Hi, I'm Darcy Hallander. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers. Um, this will be my 18th year teaching kindergarten. Um, and I want to welcome all of you who are new to our Newport family. And for those of you who attended our pre-K program, I want to uh, welcome back and uh, just say how happy we are to continue your child's education journey with us. See you soon. Hi everybody, my name is Katie Reese. I teach kindergarten at the PEC and I look forward to seeing all of you in the fall. Hi future Hi. kindergartners and your families. This is Mrs. Madursky. I just want to send out a very warm welcome to you. And I want to let you know, I'm so excited to see all you brand new kindergartners come the fall, however that may be. I can't wait to teach you and see you. We do a lot of fun and exciting things in kindergarten and you're really going to love it. Hi boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Gatehouse. I teach kindergarten over here at the PEC. I cannot wait to meet you in September. Don't forget, always choose kind. And I am ready to rock and roll. I hope you will be too. I will see you soon. Hello, my friends. I am Mrs. Fernandez. I am the kindergarten teacher at the PEC. And I am looking very forward to meeting all of you in September. Have a great day, and remember to always choose kind. Thank you. Hi, my name is Candy Ellen Thomas, and I teach kindergarten. Welcome to our kindergarten family. We can't wait to see you in the fall. Bye-bye. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Kennard, and I'm going to be one of the teachers working in kindergarten this year. I hope you have a wonderful summer, and I can't wait to see you in the fall. Bye. All right, well, there you have it. That is the kindergarten team, and they um, are so excited to meet each of you this, this coming September. Um, right now, I would also like to introduce to you our kindergarten student ambassadors. Um, again, uh, Mrs. Uh, Schlosser and I uh, worked with a group of kindergarten leaders. Um, and they helped us produce a very special video. Um, we're gonna show you a snippet of this video today, and then maybe some of you have already watched the full video. We did send the QR codes home, but I'm gonna go over how to uh, access QR codes uh, after we hear from Armin, our first student ambassador. <laughs> Tell you a little bit about it. 
Kindergarten makes me happy. I got three teachers. They make me feel happy and they greet me off the bus every day. Hi, my name's Almond. I'm in kindergarten. My teacher is Mrs. Hernandez. Mrs. Hernandez teaches us kindness and she teaches us the kindness pledge. And do you know what kindness is? Kindness is love in your heart and and when you be nice to others. This is the um, kindness pledge. I pledge to myself on this very day to try to be kind in every way to every person, big or small. I will help them if they fall. When I love myself and others too, that is the best that I can do. Hello, PEC friends. My name is Kensley Kilmer, and I am a kindergarten graduate. Today, I have to talk about writing. Here are some important things to remember about writing. One, use capital letters. Two, use finger spaces. Three, don't forget your punctuation. today. Push-ups are what I'm first going to show you. I'm going to show you knee push-ups. <laughs> There's running, clapping up time, and there's walking. At Wilson Polo is the best. You're going to have so much fun. So you're, there you have it. Uh, our kindergarten student ambassadors were really amazing. And I think they represent our program so proudly. Um, really, our mission here is to build confidence in students. And we listen to them all of the time. We give students an opportunity to be a part of our program and to lead. Um, we do have what's called the Leader in Me uh, program where we teach students uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Happy Students. You may know them in the corporate world, but we also use them here at the PEC. And we're always looking for ways to help students shine and to empower them on their pathway. Um, so uh, I wanna thank the families that helped us with that uh, video. Producing all of this virtually has been um, a different challenge for us, but they did a beautiful job. Um, so you actually were sent home, and I'm gonna bring it up now just to remind everybody uh, what's called QR codes. And they look like, I'll show them to you in just a second. They look like something you'd scan at the gro grocery store. Um, and so, this was on the back of your invite letter uh, to today's orientation. Uh, if you don't have it anymore, uh, you can also get these from our PEC website on our front page. But what you simply do is um, you download a QR code reader from the App Store or Google Play onto your smartphone or tablet. And basically, once you have that QR code reader, you just hold up your tablet or your iPhone right to the QR code and the video that we just played will be live for you. And actually every video that we're showing you today, we have the three QR codes for that. 
And the real reason is, again, we didn't show the full video of the student ambassadors today. Uh, it's about, uh, I think it's 11 minutes long. And we just wanted to give you a snippet. But to show that video to your uh, kindergarten child uh, this summer, maybe a couple times to help get them acclimated and feel more comfortable uh, by listening to other students who have been through kindergarten. Um, it's all about the transition process. So we didn't wanna just play that for you once. We wanted it to be there for you and for your child as you feel your child needs to experience it. We do recommend that prior to coming to school this summer that you do show the teacher video again, especially once you've been placed in a classroom. We will be sending out uh, teacher placements. Um, we usually do that. Kindergartner mailing goes out first, and that's usually by the second week of August. So by mid-August, you will know your teacher, and then you can uh, scan the meet the teacher video again and say, there, there she is. Um, and again, all of that's gonna help them feel more comfortable. Um, the ambassador video is there, and we're also going to show one more video that's quite lengthy. We're going to show you just a part of it today and make sure you know how to get to it. But it will basically give your kindergartner a tour of our school, which this summer we are not able to do in person. So I really recommend that you use those QR codes to your advantage and, and play them intermittently throughout the summer uh, to support a successful transition. All right, we are now going to show you where to get another important piece of information and it's called our PEC handbook. There is a link right on our PEC webpage. So if you go to uh, lewistonporter.com, lewport.com, you will then um, go right to the Primary Education Center, which is up at the top. You'll click on that, you'll go to our home page, and then there's a link for student and parent resources. This website this summer is under uh, construction, so we are moving things around, but we're gonna have that for you uh, right on our PEC front page. And then there is a link to the family handbook. Now, the family handbook we normally hand out uh, at the orientation, but we know we didn't want to spend the money on printing, um, uh, you know, a hundred of them at this time. We will have them printed um, once we have more guidance from New York State on reopening procedures. Um, we, we have updated it recently. So as of June, um, it is updated, um, but we understand that there may be some new procedures that we have to write into the handbook. So that's why it's live on the website for you. Um, on the front page, we will continue to let you know if there was a revision date. But as you can see, we have our, our new mission statement right on there for the handbook. Um, and I'd like to draw your attention to the table of contents, just so you know uh, what's in there. Um, if after today's Zoom, you said, oh my goodness, I forgot to ask about this. Probably most of the answers are in this handbook. Um, if, if you cannot find your answer, you can call me at any time. I work here all summer and I'd be happy uh, to speak to you by, by the phone or you can send me an email. But as you can see, our mission and welcome statement is there, our attendance policy, um, there are some kindergarten you know, readiness um, examples in the handbook, um, some things that you can do to help your child get ready for kindergarten. Um, we're going to go over transportation today. Mrs. Bach is here and she's the coordinator of our transportation. Um, there's also some bus rules of conduct in there that we appreciate you going over with your child prior to putting them on the bus. Um, special areas. Uh, there's uh, two pages on our special area offerings and I would like to just uh, draw your attention to the special areas that we have planned for your child for this school year. So uh, they're in their kindergarten classroom for most of the day, but there will be um, every other day physical education for 40 minutes. On days when they do not go to 
their physical education class. There will be physical activity within the classroom. It could involve walking. We've done a walk across America where we track minutes in the classroom. Um, our teachers are also in kindergarten and really throughout my building, they use all kinds of uh, uh, brain breaks and something called Go Noodle uh, to get kids up and moving. Many of these are integrated into the curriculum and also help uh, students with math as they're exercising. In addition to physical education, so they will need uh, to have proper shoes for that um, uh, on their phys ed days, but really every day we, we prefer that children wear um, comfortable uh, sneakers to school. That is the safest choice. Then um, for another 40 minutes every day, there will be a rotation. And in kindergarten, they will be going to library uh, twice in this rotation to start the year. Uh, they will also attend an art class twi uh, twice during this six day rotation. They will also have music twice out of this rotation. Uh, those three specials will be rotated um, uh, within six days. And so let's say if they have art on day one, they'll have art again on day four. Um, then in the third trimester, we are broken up uh, in our school year by trimesters, uh, which means you're going to have three times that you're going to receive uh, uh, report cards on your child's progress from us. The last trimester of the school year, uh, which begins in March, uh, will, uh, we will be adding STEAM to the rotation for your child. Um, and then when STEAM is added, they will have only one library during that rotation. That is something new this year. We're very excited about it. Uh, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. It's bringing all of those disciplines together in a very exciting way. And we have uh, Mrs. Kajalak as our STEAM teacher that all the kindergartners will experience during that third trimester of learning. Um, any questions about so far about the special areas or anything else that you see in this table of uh, contents? Okay. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat yet, so I'm going to move on. At this time, I want you to hear uh, directly from a kindergarten teacher. Uh, Mrs. Darcy Allender, if you can unmute yourself. Mrs. Allender um, has been a kindergarten teacher for many, many years, uh, but she, uh, she really is a kindergarten expert. Uh, she's going to talk to you more about the program, the curriculum, what to expect, um, but she is also a teacher leader. Um, she uh, works with me very closely to organize all of the activities uh, and program in kindergarten. If there's any changes, Mrs. Allender and I work on that together, and then she supports me in leading the rest of the team of teachers. Uh, so Mrs. Allender, thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, what I'm gonna talk to you today about is about uh, the kindergarten curriculum. You'll get a more in-depth um, over, uh, overview of it when you have open house this fall. I'm not sure exactly what that open house will look like, but um, we will give you a lot more information. So what I'm going to do today is just kind of go through an overview of our ELA, which is English Language Arts program, and our math program. And then I'm going to touch with you on Seesaw as well. Um, okay, so our reading and our writing programs um, we use uh, Lucy Calkins. Lucy Calkins is a program. Um, it is very dissimilar to how you and I um, learned to read and write in that it's a workshop. So it's not like um, those basal readers that we used to get and everyone's reading the same book all week and um, the, you, just, you keep a whole group all the time. It's very different from that. Um, so what a workshop model is, is, and this is for reading and for writing. Um, it is a, uh, it has four components, okay? So the initial component is the mini lesson. 
And it's typically for those of us who can stop talking long enough to let other, you know, to keep, <laughs> to keep the flow, something I just definitely struggle with myself. It's about five or 10 minutes. And during that time, the teacher is addressing a specific strategy or skill. So it's just, again, five, 10 minutes, just real fast strategy or skill, and then um, the children are you know, off to read and or write. So let me talk a little bit about reading first. Um, in September, we will be giving a reading baseline assessment, and um, what we use for that is, is ERLA. ERLA is, uh, stands for the Early Reading um, Assessment Tool, and um, it's just a very quick assessment usually takes just a couple minutes in the fall um, for us to just get an idea of where your child is roughly um, where they uh, what level they read at and the reason that we want to know that is because they will go to a self-selected bin um, according to uh, dep depends on who your teacher is but um, some are color-coded some have one bin one two three four five some bins have a b c d e f g it just depends on your teacher but anyway they're all level so during reading workshop, what your child is going to be doing after the mini lesson is they're going to be reading from self-selected materials from those bins. And um, depending on the time of the school year, that time obviously increases. So we start with just maybe five minutes in the fall and then we increase up to close to a half hour um, of independent reading time. During that time, they'll also be reading with their reading partners. Again, um, I just need to, fully disclose that it, that may look a little different um, depending on what our guidelines are by the state, um, how far kids have to stay apart from each other. Um, but uh, up to this point, they um, would be reading some, it's some of that time with their reading partner. So now what I'm doing or what the teacher, your child's teacher will be doing is conferring. So we'll be pulling children over to read with us so that we can differentiate and kind of uh, pinpoint um, any needs they may have, what their strengths are, and uh, just kind of give that differentiation um, to your child for their specific reading. So let me just give you an example. So perhaps your child in the beginning of the year is just not consistently using picture clips. Um, and so we would just prompt for that strategy. Uh, and then the, um, the, the workshop would go on from there. You're the conferring, uh, again, depending on the time of the year, um, only lasts just a couple minutes, um, maybe up to five. And then um, also we take, take that data and we um, use the data to make skill groups and or guided reading groups. So um, we'll be able to have your child pulled at um, different times throughout the day uh, for guided reading as well. That's typically no, a group no more than five. Um, so that's, so the, the, well, then the last component for reading workshop, similar to a writing workshop, is a share out time. So they might say, oh, you know, Mrs. Anlander, um, I was able to use uh, such and such a strategy. Can I share with my friends? Sure, you can share with your friends. So um, reading work, that's reading workshop. Writing workshop is very similar to that. It's got the mini lesson component. It's got the independent um, writing component. And again, during independent writing, we're conferring with children um, independently. And again, it just kind of creating anecdotal notes and supporting them where they are and um, helping their scaffold of skills. Um, then after that, again, it's sharing with their partners, um, with, with their writing, and, uh, you know, that just kind of evolves as the school year goes on. They're able to kind of coach each other, um, and uh, depending on what the school year looks like, again, it will uh, depend on what our guidelines are by the state. Um, so that's reading and writing workshop. Did anybody have any questions about that? I know it's just kind of a quick overview, but nothing. Okay. Um, so math is, um, we use kinder math in kindergarten. Kinder math garden, um, it stands for kindergarten math. And it is based on the New York State standards. Um, the 
a team of us did a curriculum project a few uh, years, summers back, and um, just made sure that everything was absolutely aligned. Because what we were using at the time was the modules, and what we decided in kindergarten is what they were very non-user friendly. Um, nothing cute about it, and kindergarten, they're like cute as their, students, as their teachers do as well, but it just didn't give enough practice per page. Um, and we found this resource and um, with Tamara's permission, we were able to employ it. And again, um, it's aligned exactly to the New York State standards, um, which you can find on the New York State website. What you're going to get in the beginning of each unit is a unit overview, giving you um, the vocabulary that will be used in that unit, along with the skills and concepts. Um, in conjunction with the Kinder Math, we use something called um, Number Talks. Number Talks are just quick little mini lessons, maybe five minutes, and um, it allows us uh, to have a logical reasoning opportunity with the kids each day. Um, there is a turn and talk component to that as well, where they um, share what they think the answers are going to be with their friends or the, a partner near them. Um, it's very, very quick. Again, it's just maybe a five, 10 minute lesson. Um, uh, oh, and math chats. We also have math chats. Math chats are our digital um, and they are approximately seven different types of um, problems that uh, allow the curriculum to keep, um, what do I want to say, kind of evolving in terms of uh, skill. We don't forget what we did in September because it may show up in a math chat in March. So, um, there's also a turn and talk component to that as well, where there's a, uh, we used to call them word problems, word problems every day. So that is our math program. So there's, again, kinder math, math chats, and uh, number talks. Any questions? Okay. Um, Mrs. Larson, did you want me to talk about Seesaw? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay. I'm curious, and I'm just going to look by, if you could put your hand up, um, who doesn't know what Seesaw is? Like, you've never heard of it. It's totally new to you. Is there anyone that I see? One. One. Okay. Okay. So, so, yeah, why don't you talk about how you use okay. um, Seesaw, and it's especially important if we're doing any distance learning, but mm -hmm. even when we're not doing distance learning, it is a digital platform, and it's really a window into your child's classroom, mm -hmm. which um, helps, I know, especially with kindergarten parents, feel more comfortable as we're sending you messages throughout the week. So, go ahead, Darcy. So... Let's talk about Seesaw. <laughs> okay, so Seesaw is like uh, Mrs. Larson said, it's a digital port, uh, platform um, that we use for communication and for um, a digital portfolio of your child's work. So I'm gonna talk about the communication part first before I get into the digital uh, learning opportunity because um, Seesaw became a lifeline, quite honestly, for us in March when we um, had to, you know, go to distance learning literally within two days. So initially, and um, it, it was used almost primarily, I wouldn't say 100%, but primarily as a communication tool. So what you're going to get in, going to get in September is your child's QR code. Um, your QR code looks like the QR codes that Mrs. Larson showed you. And um, what happens is you're gonna scan that and you will get access to all of the things that we post um, from the classroom that uh, about your child and or any. Um, so for example, maybe your child is sharing one day their journals so will take a video and send it to you or maybe your child is um, doing a, like in the beginning of the year, we kind of just, you know, show them playing with their friends and um, we can send you that video or a picture. So, and then also it is, let me backtrack for just a second, just so you're aware, it's private. 
So your QR code is specific to your child and your child's teacher will go over this more with you at the meet and greet. But um, anything we, we post to, um, to CESA, we meaning the teachers, um, we can send it just to you and your responses go just to us and we have to approve anything that gets posted. Um, okay, so that being said, we can also post um, for a newsletter or a, and then we can post it to everyone or we can post a um, reminder notes or just, you know, anything that may be happening in the school that we just wanted to let you know about. Okay. Uh-oh, am I still there? Oh, yes, okay. I'm still here. Yes, you are. I, what I did okay. is I put up my, um, put okay. up one of the Seesaw accounts so oh. that the te that everybody can see it. Okay, so this is kind of what a, um, a teacher, or excuse me, a parent would see, right? Yeah. Is this a parent view? Yeah. Okay. The teacher view and the parent views are different. This okay. is a parent view. Okay, so this is a parent view of some things that are on there, and you'll get a ding, a notification on your phone will happen when um, there's something posted for you to look at. So um, it's really, really um, important when you get that seesaw QR code that you uh, you downloaded as, as, as fast as you can so that you can start learning or start having access to your child's journal pages and activities. So um, let's talk about what happened in March. So in March, um, we had, like I had mentioned, we, uh, I think, I don't believe um, I'm wrong on this, but Tamara can tell me if I am. I believe on Friday we were notified that we may potentially uh, not be returning to school on Monday. Yes. So we needed to very quickly <laughs> figure out what are we going to do. So here's where Seesaw uh, became basically a lifeline because what evolved then was we started teaching using Seesaw and see because we can create, teachers can create videos. So we created videos and posted them to Seesaw so that you had your lessons. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we were able to post activities. So we were able to post, you know, the math on there. We were able to post phonics. We were able to post um, reading um, activities. And um, essentially, it became our classroom um, so that parents could you know, continue their child's learning. So depending on what happens in the fall, there may be a component of that to continue. And if so, um, I, I would anticipate we'll continue to use Seesaw as the platform to do that. Um, in conjunction with, in conjunction, excuse me, with something called Reading A to Z Rats Kids, which you'll get um, more information on again as well. Um, that's an independent reading library that's digital. So um, that's Seesaw. Seesaw is something you need and you want. <laughs> um, and it really, and it, kids can, you know, they can, you can send us videos too. You can send us things. Um, it's a way for you to communicate with us as well, um, either in writing and or through video. So it's a two-way communication tool. I don't mean it to sound like it's just one way. It's actually a two-way communication tool, um, but uh, it's going to be vital um, depending on what happens. Um, you know, I'd I'm like, gonna... yes. And we plan to continue. Now, remember, we didn't start using Seesaw because of the uh, global pandemic. We right. already had it in place, and thank goodness we did because it was an easier transition for our parents who were users of Seesaw already. Um, we have about 99% of our parents now signed up for Seesaw, um, and because of that, constant use and communication using that platform, when we had to go to distance learning, it just made that transi transition, as difficult as it was, easier. Kids already knew how to use it, so we're gonna be teaching kids right away in kindergarten how to use Seesaw. They'll be teaching you. They'll say, mm -hmm. Mom, if I, if, if I hit the microphone right here, I can record my voice and I can actually say something to Mrs. Allender. Because as a, as a kindergartner, I might not know how to write it yet, 
but I can certainly talk in the microphone and uh, they could say, Mrs. Allender, I didn't understand that math video. Um, and then Mrs. Allender can immediately respond. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be using and teaching Seesaw to your young students as we always have. If we ever have to go back to distance learning, um, it will be there uh, ready to help us with that transition. So please, when we send home that Seesaw personalized QR code, uh, please um, download it right away, uh, scan that code. And if you need assistance with that, you wanna call your teacher right away. We have tech liaisons in our building um, who can also support you and actually place a phone call home and walk you through the process. But it is very simply a QR code, just like the ones I showed you earlier to gain access to those kindergarten videos. Um, but it's wonderful. It's a window into your child's classroom. Um, my children attend this district. Um, one is going into middle school. I can't believe it. It was like kindergarten was yesterday. And one is going into fifth grade. And I use Seesaw with them. I'd be in the middle of my workday at lunch and I'd get a video of my child uh, working on a project or reading. And I, I would simply be able to give a quick feedback to the child. Or if you don't have time to write anything, you can just hit a thumbs up sign or say you love it by pressing on the heart. And that child, before you e even comes home from school, has already gotten feedback from their parent. Um, so it's this wonderful way to communicate almost live with your children. Um, so uh, thank you, Mrs. Allender. You gave a great overview of our workshop model uh, for reading and writing, also the kinder map. Uh, everything is very hands-on. Um, and I just wanna emphasize that the reading and writing workshop model that we went to three years ago, every one of our teachers in K kindergarten through grade five received hours and hours of training to deliver that model because it is very differentiated to the needs of every child at our school. Um, it is not a one size fits all. It is a workshop model because the teacher is doing more working with children than just teaching a whole group. Um, it's very difficult to teach uh, children to read in whole group. Uh, so it's very differentiated to the needs of your child. Um, so we're very proud of that model um, and uh, you are very fortunate to go to Lewiston Porter because our teachers have received tremendous amount of training and support to deliver it with fidelity. Um, and they are experts. Um, any questions? That was a lot of information, but it was important information. So I just wanna pause and really give you a moment to either put a question in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask a question out loud. Okay, we're going to move on. I don't see any questions at this time and you are gonna meet a very, uh, oh, actually we're gonna to go to the PEC video before you meet our nurse. So we are gonna to go to a video that's just really about the program and is kind of a tour of the school. Again, we're not gonna show the whole thing to you, but we're going to hope that you watch this video uh, with your kindergartner so that uh, they can kind of see the inside of our school. Uh, if they did not attend our universal pre-K program, they may not have had a tour of our school yet. So this video is very important. Um, you can find it again, uh, Luport.com. Go to that primary education center tab at the top, go to student and parent resources, and you're going to see it right there. Okay, we're gonna play a part of it for you, but not all of it today. Primary Education Center.
begin our day as a school community viewing the daily announcements on our classroom smart boards. The announcements introduce us to our birthday friends, special events, and interesting projects happening in our school. Beginning each day in a positive and caring manner ignites our passion for learning while supporting the social and emotional growth of our students. So he helped you when something went wrong. I call that being proactive and being a teammate who synergizes. Congratulations to Hunter. Let's give him a round of applause. One of the most exciting parts of kindergarten for many children is learning how to read. The PEC implements a rigorous reading program aligned with the Common Core Learning Standards for English Language Arts. At the PEC, we integrate literature, informational text, phonics, listening and speaking, and grammar skills into our literacy block, allowing for the opportunity to apply strategic reading skills in a meaningful way. We do this through all of these varied instructional methods. The children also love to practice their new reading skills and strategies with parent volunteers. Parent volunteers are an integral part of our program. Lots of information will be shared with you about how to share this special kindergarten experience as a parent volunteer in our school. Specific information about how volunteers are used by your child's teacher will be shared with you at Open House in September. Reading Workshop provides children with the opportunity to read from self-selected readers. These books are written at each child's independent reading level and provide practice with fluency, decoding, and practice using learned reading strategies. Children come to kindergarten with varying abilities in emergent writing. Most often, children begin kindergarten with the ability to write letters that represent words, along with drawing a picture that matches their message. But as the year progresses, writing develops into a connected message that can be read with correctly spelled sight words, detailed pictures, correct use of spacing, punctuation, and proper use of upper and lower case letters. Our math program is aligned with the Common Core Learning Standards adopted by New York State and Okay, so uh, the rest of that video, uh, we stopped at math, um, also has uh, an introduction to all of our special areas. Um, and you'll also get to see some special programs like um, our Thanksgiving um, our Thanksgiving feast where we invite everybody to come on in and the children sing songs. Um, it's just going to show you a host of different things we do throughout the year, highlights some field trips. Uh, but I encourage you to, to really sit down with your child and at the time that's right for you this summer, um, really go through that video so that they can ask questions and start to feel more comfortable. Um, I wish that I could give you a physical tour, but I cannot do that this summer. Um, so again, the video is become, becomes even more important uh, for a successful transition to school. Any questions about what you just saw in the video? I'll pause, see if there's anything in the chat. Okay, we're gonna move on to meet our nurse, uh, Mrs. Jackie Leggett, who's here with us today. And uh, Mrs. Leggett, where are you? There you are, she's waving. She's actually <laughs> right 
uh, Mrs. Leggett is right in the nurse's office. Um, she is working today and she does work uh, several days throughout the summer uh, to support us getting all our healthcare plans up and ready. And she's gonna talk to you about some very important um, information uh, that all kindergarten families must take care of before their child attends school. So Mrs. Leggett, thank you for being here with us today. First off, I love that video. I miss seeing all the little kids and I really hope we can come back to a in-person physical school in the fall. Um, to get ready for that, uh, I'm gonna talk about what is required on my end and uh, immunizations is the biggest thing, first off. Um, even if your child was in pre-K last year, more than likely they need a few more shots, unfortunately for them, but uh, I want you to make sure that you get them because we are required to have all that in place by the 14th day of school, or they have a possibility of not being able to attend after that point, so <clears throat> it's important to get those appointments. Uh, if they've already attended pre-K, the physical from last year is sufficient. If they are new to the school as a kindergartner, they need a physical. Um, and then after that point, it's all the odd years throughout their school. Um, it'll be like first grade, third grade, fifth grade, and on for the physicals. And anytime they need immunizations. It's always a good idea to, when you go to the doctor's office, um, ask them for a copy of the physical because it is good for the year prior to the first day of school. So go ahead and get that copy. That way it's done. You can send it in and it's done for the next year. Um, medications, if there's a health concern, please get in contact with me so that we can get a health care plan in place. If they need medication, I'll need an actual order from the doctor and uh, the medication brought in in person by an adult, not put in the book bag of the student. Uh, for safety reasons, you know, anything can happen with the medication and uh, you need to bring it in to me. I need to get your signature to as an authorization to um, administer uh, and then we can go over the health care plan once again and you can look at it if you you know have anything suggestions for me um, please let me know um, yeah that's so like especially like allergies food allergies I like to communicate any health concerns with the teachers uh, we make out a health alert list that goes to the individual teacher and that health alert list stays right with the class as they go to their specials or if there's an emergency evacuation then uh, that health information goes along so that whoever is in need has that for um, emergency situations. Um, and speaking of emergencies, and anytime I need to call, I need emergency numbers. So I will be calling uh, if you know we need a, a second number. You know, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, whoever you want me to call. If I can't reach you, I do use seesaw at times. Uh, if it's not an emergency, and I want to just communicate with you that you know. Little Johnny was in the nurse's office today complaining of such and such. You know, if it's a need that I don't have to send them home, I try to communicate that they did make a visit just so that you were aware. Um, let's see. Um, extra clothing and sneakers. If you could please send in extra clothing and sneakers to keep in the locker, um, that's a good idea. I, I, this day and age now, I'm hesitant about using our extra clothing at school. Uh, I don't know like, you know, how well they've been washed, uh, infection control reasons. I'd rather have each student have their own set of clothes on hand for any accidents, any accidents. Um, 
you know, they can change into their own clothing. And like Mrs. Larson said, they really need their own sneakers. Uh, it's best for them to wear them in, but say by chance it's a snowy day and they wear their boots, they should have their own sneakers in their book bag or an extra pair in their locker uh, because I got rid of all mine here. <laughs> so we don't have that. And also, you know, like they said, they, they go outside to the playground so often and the sandals, the flip-flops, that's just not safe. So um, I am here, like I said, I'm here the rest of today till 3.30 if you want to call and talk to me about anything. Uh, otherwise, you can email me. I check my email all summer long, and uh, I will certainly get back in touch with you if you have any concerns. I think that's it for me right now. Thank you, Mrs. Leggett, for being here with us today. Uh, and like I said, she has days throughout the summer. Um, you can email either of us or give us a ring if you need support. We'll make sure that uh, we get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, but please, please get your physicals and your immunizations uh, to us prior to the start of school. So if you don't have an appointment yet, please do so. Uh, most of our doctor's offices locally are really good about getting you in for those shots. They know that you need them to attend school. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we now have uh, Mrs. Myers, who is our full-time social worker. And Mrs. Myers is at this time only at the PEC. So uh, we get to have her for all of our students. Um, and she is there to deliver many programs, one of which she's gonna talk to you about today that every child gets called Second Step. And uh, she is also there to help support the transition uh, into kindergarten. And uh, most children are very resilient and do a very good job with that. Um, she's also there for parents. Sometimes it's harder for the parents than it is for the child. Um, so she'll talk to you a little bit more about support services that she has uh, throughout the year. Thank you, Mrs. Before Fire. we start, we did have a question oh, in the you. uh, chat. You're welcome. It says, uh, what's the best way to get the required forms to the nurse and can these be dropped off at the main office or do you prefer them mailed? Uh, some doctor's offices will fax them right to the, uh, the main office here. Uh, the number is 2867855. I'm right, Mrs. Bach, I believe. Uh, you can have them mailed. Uh, I'm not sure if accessing the, the main office at this point is uh, allowed. So probably mail or having them faxed would be the best. Faxing would be the best, uh, but if you do have a form that you need to drop off, uh, we are here, uh, clerical are here in the summer. You will, uh, we are locked, but you can ring the front main door buzzer. We'll have a table there for any forms you need to drop off. You'll put the form, uh, you'll tell people that you're there to drop off medical forms. You'll put it right on the table and then we will, we will make sure it gets into Mrs. Leggett's hands. Awesome. So for whatever reason you forget to fax it or you walk out of the doctor's office with it, you can make a copy and have it dropped off at the school, okay? If you didn't catch that number, also Ms. Myers put it in the chat box, so it's up there for right now, you can access that. Thank you. Excellent question. Uh, hi everyone, so as Mrs. Larson said, my name is Ms. Myers. I am the full-time social worker here at the PEC. My uh, main job is to support all of the students' uh, social and emotional needs throughout the school year. I provide individual and group counseling for those students that need that service. Um, but specifically in the beginning of the year, we do have children who that separation is difficult and, and for some parents it is as well. So um, you might see me in the main office during those first few days of school helping parents and students transition down the hallway. Um, and if you, you know that maybe you're going to have difficulty with your child come September, depending on what that looks like, feel free to reach out to me now. Um, or any time over the summer and we can we can talk about that and how to support your child in the best way. One of my um, favorite 
responsibilities and jobs is to deliver social and emotional instruction to all students in the building. And I do that with a program called Second Step. It is um, a really, it's a research-based tool. Um, it's very user-friendly and the kids really seem to enjoy it. I think the teachers uh, don't mind me coming in as well, right, Mrs. Allender? <laughs> She's smiling. Um, the main goal of the program is to help students identify emotions in themselves, but also in others. Um, and really the basis for that is, as we know, if you can't read others' feelings, emotions, and you can't identify your own, communication becomes very difficult and relationship building suffers. So that is the first kind of goal of the program is to work on that uh, emotion identification piece. And then we move into some problem solving skills and also uh, how to regulate strong emotions. So. We teach relaxation techniques. There's dances and songs. Uh, we play games to work through all of these things. So I spend just about 12 weeks in every classroom by the time the school year ends um, going through those lessons. This year, uh, that didn't happen, obviously, because of, of the, the shutdown, but I was able to still, through Seesaw, um, send out some of those activities and reminders for families and for students, um, some of those techniques that they could use at home. So if you have questions for me, I'm here um, throughout the summer, not every day, but I am here usually at least once a week. Um, you can get me by email. I check it every day. I check my messages on my phone. So if you need anything, uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much, Mrs. Myers. Uh, she's wonderful and uh, we're very fortunate to have her here full time. Many district social workers are split between buildings and she is just for us at the PEC. So uh, please know that that is a support system for you. All right, now I know one of the questions we always get asked is about the busing and transportation. So we have Mrs. Beth Bach here today who coordinate something called Pickup Patrol, and um, she's going to explain to you um, some of the procedures of that and some paperwork you'll need to fill out. Um, but Mrs. Bach is, um, we're also very, very lucky to have because she ensures that every, uh, by following all these procedures and supporting parents, um, that every child gets to the right destination and gets home safely. So Mrs. Bach? Tell us Thank why you. we love Pickup Patrol. Thank you, Mrs. Larson. Um, Pickup Patrol is an app that goes on your phone. How convenient is that? Um, but you can't get it at the app store. So I need to gather information from the parents and what I need are your email addresses. And we can have, and you will be getting this form. I'll talk about a mailing in a minute. But this is all about Pickup Patrol and how it works. And we can collect up to four email addresses per student. So it could be, um, it could be uh, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. It could just be two people or it could just be one. The, the choice is yours, but four is the maximum. So what I, like I said, you can't get this app at the app store. So... Once I receive your information, I load that information into Pickup Patrol, and then you will receive a welcome to Pickup Patrol um, email. When you open that email, it lets you set it up. It's very user-friendly. Um, you assign a password, and it's very secure in that way. So Pickup Patrol is used mainly for um, dismissal. Um, so that right now, all families, their plan is to be picked up at their home address by bus and to be delivered to their home address by bus. That does not work for all families. Some families prefer or need to pick their child up at school. Some families need um, daycare. Some need the SAC program, which is our YMCA after school program. 
Um, and some families need a daycare or um, grandma's house, and some families need a combination of all of those things. So we have, a rem <clears throat> excuse me, remember that the default plan right now is home. You will be getting um, a yellow form, which I know you can't see very well right now, but in the mailing, and that allows you to permanently change the default plan. So you can change your, for example, you want your child to be picked up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but take the bus home Tuesday, Thursday. You can indicate that on the, um, yeah, I, we call it the yellow form, but it's the default plan change form. You can also change the address on this form, not on Pickup Patrol, but on this form for where you want your child to be picked up in the morning. And this is for long-term permanent changes. Um, one other form that we have as well is the, uh, is the pink form, which again, you can't see very well right now, but it's the permanent student pickup form. And that allows you to circle the days that you will permanently be picking your child up. And it also has an option, it's optional, but most people like to fill this out. Um, you can fill out names of persons that you permit to come and pick your child up without an extra note. This gives permission for the entire school year and the option for either early dismissal or just regular dismissal. We, I use that a lot at the end of the day when people come to pick them up and they have, you always have to have ID to get a child. Um, and I can, if they haven't specified that day that it's going to be someone different I could look at this form and see that you've given that authorization. So Mrs. Bach, yes. um, I'm a parent in the district and if I want to pick up my child, uh, if I want my, my mother to pick up my child, the child's grandmother, and that's the emergency contact I've given the school. No. And that can grandma take the child? Grandma can, she cannot, Mrs. Leggett has her emergency contacts, which are different than the um, pickup authorization that you've given us. So grandma cannot pick that child up unless you filled out this pink form. You've indicated that grandma is coming through pickup patrol. Um, and that's it, I think. If it's on this form or if you put it in pickup patrol. Right. So the district and, and, you know, in the beginning of kindergarten and the beginning of every school year, they're going to ask you to update things like uh, emergency contacts. And those are the people we call when we can't get a hold of you um, to alert them of something. And you know, many times it's, you know, the child is sick um, and we're trying to get a hold of you. So we'll, the nurse will call the emergency contact and say, can you help us, you know, get a hold of the legal guardian or parent? but that does not give them permission to take your child home. We're very, very strict about that. Um, I'm sure you can understand that there are many, many different family situations and dynamics. So we wanna make sure that you as the parent or legal guardian has given us permission when it's not you taking that child home. We have to have your authorization. Um, so that pink form, that Mrs. Bach just held up will give somebody authorization for the entire year or until you tell us you need to change it. You, you can certainly change the form at any time. You just have to let us know and put that in writing. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see, do we have any questions about transportation? All of these forms are gonna be mailed home to you. Um, probably mid-July is our target. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, again, we know we're gonna have guidelines from our state education task force on reopening that may impact transportation. Um, however, we still need to have you fill out these forms, whether we have 50% of the children on a bus or all of the children, we need these forms filled out. So we're gonna send those out and then any updates that we might have from the task force we're certainly gonna be communicating to our entire district. Um, so let's see, any questions about transportation in the chat? Uh, 
I don't see anything at this time. Uh, so please, when you get those forms, please either mail them back to us or drop them off at, the, at our front door. We'll buzz you in and you can put those right on our table in our main foyer. And we're here all summer. We're here yeah. all summer. Um, yeah. And we open every day. So if you have any questions, myself or Mrs. Bach will be glad to help you and walk you through setting up. Tran those transportation forms are the first thing you will receive in the mail from us in July. It will not be, sometimes parents get excited because they want to know who their teacher is. It'll not be that in July. You will get that in August. We send this out first because there's a lot of coordination that goes on, um, making sure we know where you want your child to go on the, the first day of school. So we really need your cooperation in getting those forms back to us, and that's why they are sent first. All right, thank you so much. Mrs. Bach, that was great. So now, uh, really, the floor is open to you. Um, you did send in some questions that you want answered. Uh, some of you did that ahead of time, but we've given you a lot of information today and um, I really do like to have dialogue with the parents. So please understand that if you have the que a question, probably somebody else has the same one. Um, but like I said, you can also send me a question privately in the chat or you can call me. Um, but the first question that we got uh, from the Google form you filled out is, will there be a day to drop off supplies before school starts? That's an excellent question. Um, so what I want to tell you is that our normal plan is the first two days of school for our district, which are the Tuesday and Wednesday after Labor Day. That Tuesday and Wednesday, your child will not be picked up to go to school. Grades first through grade 12 will be picked up. Your child starts on Thursday after Labor Day, okay? And the reason for that is the first two days are special days for kindergarten families. You will have a personalized kindergarten appointment with a teacher like Mrs. Allender, whoever your child's teacher is, they will have a schedule of family appointments for two full days so that you will have approximately 20 minutes to meet with your teacher and the child, your child should be with you. They'll get to see the room, they'll get to drop off their supplies, we'll show them where their locker is, there will be a name on their locker, and you will actually get to sit down uh, with your child's teacher personally which this year is gonna be more important than ever because we didn't get to do our normal face-to-face -face orientation. So those uh, teacher family meet and greets uh, will be scheduled the first two days of school. You will uh, be sent your appointment in the mail when you get your child's classroom teacher mailed to you. Again, that'll be mid-August so that you have a few weeks to make arrangements. Um, so, uh, great question. You can drop off those supplies during your, your teacher uh, personalized meeting the first uh, two days of school after Labor Day. Tamara, can I just interject something very quickly? Sure. Absolutely. We, there are occasionally um, families who ha have needs um, that go beyond a possible 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and that is fine. Um, the, that's the purpose of meeting with you is to hear about, um, well, one of the purposes of meeting with you is to hear about your needs and um, before your child begins school. And like I mentioned, sometimes there's some extenuating circumstances that uh, create a need for extensive dialogue. If you feel like your appointment will take longer than 20 minutes, uh, please contact the, the office and they can either put you first or last on our schedule so that we can um, accommodate your needs and stay on schedule for the other families. Right. And again, if there's uh, any medical or health needs, we would ask that you would do that before the first day of school and call Mrs. Leggett uh, sometime this summer. So we can have a, if, if needed, a healthcare plan ready to go for you on day one. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Allender. 
Um, so the next question was really about supplies. Like, what do I have to get? We will be posting this on our website uh, more towards the end of July, but I do have uh, the tentative list up there for you. Most of these things are not going to change, um, but we anticipate um, that children may need to wear masks coming to school. Uh, we don't know that for certain yet or at what ages we'll need to wear masks, but once we know that, we will um, be adding that to the list. Right now, I just put for you, we anticipate that this may be a mandate. Um, and so we're asking that you, if that becomes a mandate, that you purchase a washable and comfortable mask um, and, and have it represent your child's personality. Um, you know, we're gonna need to make it as comfortable as possible for each child. Uh, our PTSA, I've already been in contact with them. We are already designing um, Luport masks if you choose to purchase one through the PTSA. Um, and they will run anywhere from three to five dollars, it's looking like, with a Luport logo on it. If you choose to have your child's name embroidered on it, uh, these are masks that, of course, you can wash. Um, that's also helpful and could be uh, Stewart's sports store is willing to do that for us. Um, because as you can imagine, um, masks are going to get, you know, taken off and maybe uh, misplaced. So having your child's name on it is, is great. Um, so that's just an option I want you to know about if masks are going to be mandated. And that's still an if, but I'm just, uh, as I'm sure you are listening to our governor speak, and uh, it sounds like wearing masks is going to be um, a new norm for us. So we want to offer you some options. Um, if, if a child comes to school without a mask, we are going to have masks for them. Um, but uh, you may wanna be trying out different masks that are comfortable for your child. Um, so there's the rest of the list um, of different things that you will need going into kindergarten. I will have that list posted to the website um, later in July when we know more from the state. Um, to see if there's anything else we might need to add. Um, I know for sure we're gonna want um, an individualized toolbox for all of your child's supplies. Uh, in some programs prior to um, our pandemic, um, you know, kids would bring in supplies and there would be community bins. And we will no longer be doing that. There will not be sharing of supplies, so they will need an individual toolbox for their supplies. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see if there's anything in the chat. Okay, I see something about a third grader as a new Luport student. Is there any chance we'll be able to get her a bit of exposure to the school um, before it begins? Um, I do know uh, the principal is named at the intermediate building, which has grades three, four, and five. I have one section of third graders over here, but it's only if they're in a multi-age program. Um, and most of our third graders are at the IEC next door. I know that she is looking to have a virtual orientation similar to this later in the summer, so I would stay tuned to that. Um, but I do know that our buildings are locked down now. Not even, our teachers aren't even allowed to come in. It's very limited because we are sanitizing the entire school. Um, possibly in August, closer to the reopening date, there might be some more flexibility uh, with having some tours for students who have some, might have some adjustment issues. I would contact your building principal and or uh, the social worker in each building if you have concerns about that. But I do believe they're gonna be offering a virtual orientation for third graders. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, anything else? Another question uh, that we had is, can parents request a specific teacher? Uh, if you do have uh, particular learning needs that you want us to know about, you can put that in writing in an email to me. 
it must come directly to me. If you know a teacher, because uh, many of our teachers live right in the community, um, if you send them a letter, it is not going to support uh, placement in that teacher's classroom. It really needs to come directly to me. I am in charge of all of uh, the placements for kindergarten. Uh, so uh, please make sure that comes to me uh, directly. Um, I think we already handled the third question that was sent in, and that was, are there any medical forms that need to be completed? Um, I believe Mrs. Le Leggett addressed that. Um, uh, is there anything else in the chat? Okay. That is all we have for you today. Um, uh, we did, this did last a little longer than we had anticipated. We had anticipated maybe an hour with it not being in person. Um, but uh, I appreciate you hanging with us. This is the first time we've done this. So thank you for your patience. I wanna thank everybody who joined us today. The parents, uh, this is an important part of transition for you also um, as uh, we begin the kindergarten journey together. I cannot express enough uh, how important your voice is to us at the Primary Education Center. Um, if there is a concern or a problem that needs to be resolved, we always ask that you, know, you try to take care of that with your teacher first. Um, but I am always here for families to listen um, to specific concerns or more global concerns. Um, our program grows with your feedback. Uh, so we are very, very open to that. Uh, we welcome you to our school and our kindergarten family. It truly is a family environment. And uh, we just cannot wait to meet your child in person. Um, that's the hardest part about this pandemic right now for us is not having your children right here with us. Um, a book that I just want to recommend that's out there that you might want to read to your child before school starts is uh, it's Natasha Wings. Um, if Miss Myers, you want to put that right in the chat for me, I'd really appreciate that. But it's the night before kindergarten. So I'm just going to put that up there for the webcam. Um, you may want to get that book and read it to your child uh, prior to the beginning of kindergarten. It's a great story. Um, and it's something you can read throughout the summer. So The Night Before Kindergarten by uh, author Natasha Wings. Thank you so much everyone for making this um, a successful experience today. I hope that you got the information you, you needed to get started. But again, we are here all summer, a few of us to help you. Mrs. Myers has days in the summer, our social worker and also our nurse and I am here almost every day. So uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, if you need anything more, please reach out. Take care and stay well. And thank you, Wendy, for all your technology support in the background. Went very well. Bye-bye.